My experiences with Diviner Sage were not what I had assumed they would be. A friend, let's call him M, and myself had procured two vials of our mysterious friend from an online supplier. When our package arrived we hurried into the woods and began experimenting. The setting was hardly ideal for Sage. A sunny, cool day with a loudly traveled path nearby. M. Went under, first, choosing to smoke a cautiously small bowl through a small metal pipe which he quickly supplemented with another small bowl. Soon after he finished and laid back on his jacket spread on the snow, I joined him by smoking a smallish bowl. When I finished I expected to see wild hallucinations. Rather, I felt a strong pull towards the south. It was an odd pulling sensation, like my mind was being separated from my body and was being moved rapidly to somewhere else. I felt like something was trying to show me something of great importance. The physical sensation was odd. I felt disconnected from my body and the whole outside world. It was a cool, numb feeling. Not more than a few minutes into this I became frustrated by the outside world distracting me from whatever the plant was trying to show me and I became quite afraid that my mind would not make it back into my head. For the half hour after that I felt a pleasant sedation while my mind reconnected with my body. The world seemed greenish and somehow disconnected from me. It was interesting to note that M also felt a strong pulling from the same direction and felt similarly disconnected from our reality. The second session was far more interesting. In M's bedroom we proceeded to smoke what was reported on the net to be a good dose, about one-tenth of a gram of the extract. I went first. I smoked the whole bowl in two quick tokes from a bong. As I put the bong down, I realized that the room had changed. It was kind of hazy now, with a slight green tint. I had my back to the window and felt the peculiar sensation that there was nothing behind me. I felt my mind being pulled as before, back into the emptiness behind me. I went with it and saw the bedroom like a shoebox on its side as I moved out of it. As I was being pulled back I felt the need to lie down. I was sitting cross-legged. As there came an odd strain on my lower back. Some distance into this void. I saw all of reality before me as a wall of rooms and images that were 2D, but still 3D somehow. I could see all the people on earth as bodies connected by a small fiber that emanated from the void and connected to their heads. I suddenly realized that the void I was moving through was far more than nothingness, but at this point my ego re-emerged and I became afraid of losing my identity. I could sense the presence of two people that were talking to each other. I had only a vague impression of the male one. I couldn't get a clear image of him but he had a powerful presence and a calm, goofy personality. The being that really entranced me was female, dark and spindly. I could feel that she was strong and wise and it was her reaching from the void and pulling at my mind. She said something like, he's putting up a fight, he's not ready to go yet, and the man said something that agreed with her. I realized I had been fighting the pull all along out of fear and didn't want to go any further from the world I knew. I felt myself moving back into my body and into reality. For the next few minutes afterward I felt I had great personal insight and life and reality became crystal clear in my mind. I felt as if I had discovered how life works. I was still very disconnected but able to move around and traded spots with M as he prepared for his turn. M. Laid back and inhaled his bowl with the efficiency of a heavy pot smoker. He laid on his bed for several minutes before relating the details of his voyage. He said he felt the presence of two beings like I had. He noted the male as being, a frog, and that it was perhaps because the last thing he saw before closing his eyes was the frog sticker on his dresser. He saw me sitting on a railway track moving away from him and the frog told him something like, there goes, my name, on the track, and then told him to, keep going that way, while gesturing further down the track. He went no further, though, and quickly returned to reality. What startled me the most about all of this were the similarities between our experiences together. M. Was telling me about the two beings before I even mentioned my encounters with them. I feel the need to go further along with these two beings. The female I identify as being the spirit of the sage. I feel like there is so much she could show me and that I have to mentally prepare myself before I can go further. The third session I felt very little, not enough sage I think. But M experienced a communication with the frog wherein he was told why we couldn't get any further than we did and what we have to do in order to go further. Unfortunately, he couldn't remember what he was told. I would recommend that anyone who tries sage should definitely pay attention to the preferred setting as it has a major impact on the quality of the experience. I can't wait to see what's further down that track.